Hi everyone, it's the Chrissy B Show time again and we are the UK's programme that's dedicated to looking after your mental health and well-being. Now you all know the drill, exercise makes us feel good, there's no two ways about it, but today we really try to understand why and how exercise has such a positive influence on our mental health. To help us to do so is our resident psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang, who'll be telling us about the relationship between exercise and our mind and how we get into the right mindset. Then I'll be hearing from psychotherapist and author of Run For Your Life, William Pullen, who'll be explaining how he believes mindful running is the key to happiness. We'll also be hearing from Bruce Baclarian, director of the documentary RX Run, which follows three young Canadians with severe mental health issues who are prescribed to join a long distance running group in an attempt to transform their lives. And Hannah Richards will be giving her nutritional tips for those who are new to exercise. Then we feature Let's Share, a community that encourages women to get involved with more extreme sports. And finally, I'll be telling you how I personally find motivation to exercise. Now, exercise has always been known to improve mental health, but only until recently has it been used as a real form of therapy. So some studies show that one vigorous exercise session can help alleviate symptoms for hours, and a regular schedule may significantly reduce those symptoms over time. The NHS suggests adults between the ages of 19 to 64 should do 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity a week. So that can be cycling or fast walking, as well as strength exercises that work all the major muscles two or more days a week. If that sounds too much, alternatively, they also say you can try 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity that could be running or a game of tennis along with strength exercises. This also applies for older people over the age of 65. Young people up to the age of 17 need an hour of physical activity every day, with three days of those being focused on strong muscles. So with so much exercise to get through, how do you guys do it? We check Twitter to find out. Athlete Motivation say exercise in the morning before your brain figures out what you're doing. Shane asks, anyone else having issues being able to get good grades, work, exercise and eat healthy, do laundry, clean, be on time, sleep eight hours and still have fun? Daz says, if it wasn't for anxiety, I don't think my heart would ever get any exercise. And here's a quote from actress Erin Gray, the hardest thing about exercise is to start doing it. Once you are doing exercise regularly, the hardest thing is to stop it. Lewis says, exercise, I thought you said extra fries. And Justin says, anyone struggling with exercise or healthy eating, just remember it takes 21 days to form a habit. Push through, I'm rooting for you. Well now let's hear some more about exercising from mental health with Dr. Audrey Tang. Welcome to the show, Audrey. Thank you, Chrissy. Thanks for having me. Lovely to have you on again. So Audrey, obviously there is a link between exercising and mental health. Can yep. you tell us a bit more about that? Indeed there is. There's two links. There's a direct link for exercise and there's also the peripheral uh, positive psychology that you can get out of exercise as okay. well. So directly, exercise has been shown to raise endorphins, to raise uh, serotonin levels, dopamine levels, which mm -hmm. just make us feel a lot better. Yeah. And also because it exhausts our body, we end up sleeping better and then that can be beneficial as well. Yeah. But for me, the real psychological benefits are if you're exercising, you might be going out, so you're getting some vitamin D. You okay. might be meeting a community, you'll be seeing people, even walking the dog, you will see other people walking their dogs, you'll have a conversation. So mm. those are the extra benefits that you can get. Also, for people with ADHD, exercise can channel that extra yeah, energy. Yeah. For a child with Asperger's or autism on the spectrum, it might well be that they can fit into a team very mm. well and enjoy sort of social sports too. And actually, exercise can be something where if you're good at it, you get that feeling of accomplishment, you get that yeah. feeling of praise of having done something well. Mm -hmm. And there's so much choice out there as well that it kind of gets your creative muscle going as well. So yeah. there are a lot of, a lot of benefits, definitely something okay. that everyone should, should get involved in in some way. Yeah. I think it's important to remember though that exercise isn't just you know, oh no pain no gain you know feel the burn yeah, it's yeah. not we're not back in the 80s anymore <laughs> it is now a case of um, exercising so that you feel warm but not overheated that your breathing mm. just gets that little bit heavier but not that you're out of breath you want to okay. be able to still carry on a conversation mm -hmm. and actually one of the most important things is 
as we're getting older, it's really important to do the exercises that will help us, for example, squats, getting in and out of a chair. Yes. <laughs> it's, yes, that does get more difficult as you get older. It does. <laughs> so therefore, it's really important to start now, yeah, yeah. whilst we can still do it, to strengthen those muscles, yeah. because it becomes a lot easier for us later on. That's right. And Audrey, are there any dangers, though? So, for example, if someone is maybe depressed and they feel better by doing some exercise. Mm. Isn't there a danger that then that person could start over-exercising because yeah. they want to feel better all the time? There's a couple of issues. Mm. Um, well, research has shown, first of all, on the positive side, that exercise can be as effective in treating mild depression okay. uh, as, as antidepressants. However, again, with all research, just take it as it comes because that will be a small population okay. and it may be related only to one area and, and so on. But that's what recent research has shown. However, yes, the other danger is if you start exercising, say you're losing weight, you're feeling really good about yourself, and then you're getting the compliments, there is that danger that you may start feeding off those compliments okay. and then wanting to do yeah. more because you're getting more compliments. Yeah. And then it'll get to a point where you may become addicted to it. It, mm -hmm. it can also stop you from dealing with the actual problem because exercise is a really great channel of energy. If you're yeah. feeling stressed, you're feeling angry, you go and sort of hit a tennis ball around or a squash ball around, yeah. that's great. But if you're always using that and you're always distracting yourself from the actual problem, when are you ever going to deal with it? So yeah. those are the dangers of exercising. And also, with, before starting any exercise routine um, or program, you must, must talk to your GP as yeah. well, okay. just in case. You've also got the issues with things like um, uh, high blood pressure, um, if you're pregnant, any mm -hmm. of those special populations they're known as. If, yeah. if you fall into one of those, it doesn't mean exercise is not for you, but it does mean check first. Okay. Now in terms of, I mean, you mentioned there that exercise can help people with mild depression. What yeah. about the more serious things that obviously that should exercise then be done with something else, with some other treatment? Um, exercise alone, is unlikely to be enough and mm -hmm. as I say whilst exercise can do certain things to our physiology yeah. it will it's also the social benefits of seeing people consistently um, having that accountability to people getting out meeting people mm -hmm. all of those things that will, will help as well so I'd never say exercise on its own is the yeah. only thing to do but mm -hmm. it is certainly something that can boost a healthier lifestyle on the pathway to good mental health. Okay and how about for you personally what do you like to do for exercise? Uh, I like dancing. I've okay. always enjoyed dancing. I what danced, kind of dancing? Um, I did, did the whole lot. Ballet tap jazz when I was little. Okay. Um, then when I went to uni I did ballroom dancing oh, which nice. is a lot yeah. of fun um, and I used to roller dance, artistic roller dancing Ooh. and so <laughs> if anyone's seen Blades of Glory yeah. it was like that okay. but on roller skates <laughs> we did have those Aww. outfits um, and it's funny, I recently went to a roller disco um, where, strangely enough, I saw some of the students that I used to teach and I suddenly became very, very cool because I could actually do some of the tricks. Oh, so. nice. <laughs> but oh, yeah, so I enjoy good. that. I've got my pedometer on as yeah. well. So Brilliant. if nothing else, walking is yeah. a really good form of exercise. And my, my little dog, Brandy, she gets me out walking as well. Oh, lovely. So it's good to actually enjoy what you're doing as well because yeah. otherwise it's just a chore, isn't it? Like, I think do. that's actually a really important point, Chrissy, mm. in that um, we always think, oh, I hate running well you don't have to run there's yeah, yeah. lots of other things yeah. that you can do if you're worried speak to a personal trainer speak to someone at the gym or mm -hmm. even speak to your friends because it might be that there's a salsa club on or there might be belly dancing or yeah. something completely different and um, combat you you had um you had combat academy yes, on yeah on a different show so again there are lots of different ways of keeping fit and it doesn't have to be a pounding on a treadmill mm. or going to a spin class if you don't like that sort of thing exactly it's more important to just kind of get started yeah and find something that you like exactly exactly Brilliant. Audrey thank you so much and we'll see you Pleasure. again next week all right guys so you may remember one of the moderate exercises you can do for 150 minutes a week is fast walking and here fitness trainer Jane Rafter gives us the advantages of power walking Today I'd like to talk to you about the advantages of power walking and if you've seen my clips before you'll know I'm a great fan of power walking and there are several reasons for that. So if someone who's not fit, quite deconditioned, says to me I, I really don't know where to start, say they've had bad knees or a bad back and they just feel very unfit, I always say start with walking. Normal walking if you're feeling really unfit and then build up to power walking so that just means that you're walking at a pace 
enough to really raise your heart rate. You never actually run, so it's very gentle on the joints, but you walk in at quite a pace as though you're late for something and you just keep walking. And in terms of how long, you know, if you're feeling really unfit, you start with 10 minutes and you build it up and you build it up. So you can build up the speed and you can build up the duration of time. My advice is to get yourself some good running shoes because although you're not running, you're still walking at quite a pace and you do want support for your ankles, you're less likely to fall over. I mean, it supports the knees and the back as well. Um, maybe get a buddy to go with you. It's nice to have a chat and a walk. Maybe get a dog or borrow someone's dog. There's loads of beautiful outdoor places you can get fresh air. It's good for you psychologically as well as physically. So set yourself a, a walking program and I guarantee you'll feel fit and hopefully you'll really enjoy it as well. Thank you very much to Jane. Well, tune in after the break when I'll be hearing how running can be used as a form of therapy with author William Pullen and filmmaker Bruce Bracklerian. And I'll leave you with this. How would you rate Britain's exercise level? Above average or shockingly low? Find out after this break. Welcome back to today's program, everyone. So today we're focusing on exercising for our mental health. And before the break, I asked you how you would rate Britain's exercise levels. Well, the answer is shockingly low, according to one of the most comprehensive studies conducted into physical fitness levels in England as of 2013. We're here to help us try and increase those numbers is psychotherapist and author William Pullum. Hello, William. Hi, Chrissy. Lovely to have you on the program today. Thank you. Now, William, you've, you've recently um, released your first book. That's right. Can you tell us what it's called and what it's about? It's called Run For Your Life, and it's a book that does all sorts of things. It inspires you to run. Okay. It teaches you how to do mindful running and mindful walking. And yeah. then it also has several programs on how to help you with anxiety, depression, okay. anger, all sorts of things. Helps you how to work through them. Okay. So when did you get into running yourself then? Has it been something you've been Ooh. doing for a long time? I think about 12 years ago. 12 years, okay. Were you exercising much before then? Or was it just I've something? always done, yeah, I've done a lot of, I did British military fitness, have you ever heard of oh, that? Oh yes, yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> love I've that. never tried it, but yeah, yeah I've heard yeah, of it. Yeah, it's good. No, I've always done a lot of exercise and that's what okay. got me into becoming a psychotherapist was, was working out that exercise really, it saved my bacon one time when I needed to sort of sort my own head out. I went straight to exercise because really? I knew it worked. Okay. And from there, I sort of developed everything that the book's about. Okay. What actually is then mindful running or, or walking? So mindful, mindfulness in general is about learning how to be in the present, getting rid of all the sort of clutter that's in your head, yeah. the worries about the past, the f concerns about the future, yeah. and just coming present. So when you're mindfully running or mindfully walking, you're just concentrating on your senses. What okay. can I smell? What can I hear? Um, uh, what can I see and just being present that's all okay because most people just put like some headphones on and listen to music but yeah. actually this is something quite different to actually just take in your surroundings and what actually is happening with your own body would you say absolutely and and yeah. and there are different techniques to help you get into that zone mm -hmm. um, you count your footfalls you count your breaths you can count the trees as you pass the number of people oh. that smile at you okay different things and why do you think that in particular helps rather than kind of thinking about work or thinking about other things while you're running? Because some people use it as like a way to just kind of try and beat the stress out of them in, in a sense. Yeah, I think, I think we live in an age where people multitask. And I think the yeah. problem with multitasking is we just don't ever sort of let go. Yeah. And it takes letting go to sort of come home to who you are. Uh -huh. And if we don't sort of ground ourselves in ourselves, yeah. we end up just sort of overstimulated all the time. I mean, think about all of the, the, the amount of content that's coming at you yes, constantly, true. advertising your electronic devices of one sort or another. It's just yeah. the nervous system just gets spun out. Okay. So mindfulness brings you back down to a nice calm place. Okay. And when did you actually, I know obviously mindfulness has been around for, for ages, but when did you actually think of connecting the two with running and mindfulness techniques? It was when I was training to be a psychotherapist, so 10 years ago. Um, mm. And I wanted to bring, I wanted to ground people into 
well, I guess the first part is I wanted people to be out and doing exercise while they were doing yeah. mindfulness. Mm -hmm. So that the mindfulness exercise would help them really notice where they were. Because mm -hmm. it's very easy to go into the park and just start, as you said, listen yeah. to your headphones. So it helps you just, be, there's so many senses for you to, to work with, mm -hmm. so many smells and touches and, and things to feel in the park. So that's yeah. why I wanted to do it there. And I suppose people are missing out on all of that because if they do, you know, it's good to be outdoors anyway if, you, if you're running outdoors and then to actually miss sounds of nature, for example, yeah. and all the smells like you're saying. Yeah. It's a big thing to miss out on, isn't it, really? So much, so much. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly if you're in a concrete jungle, you know, it can yes. be ages before you, yeah. you touch. I mean, I even have my clients grab a tree or I oh, plant really? them face down in the grass. A lot of people forget what the grass smells like. It can be 10, 20, oh, 30 nice. years. So you actually go out running in groups and stuff. Yeah. And you, oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. That's so if we see anyone hugging a tree, it's probably like... <laughs> yeah. Don't arrest me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and what kind of impact is this having on people's lives, William, people that you've worked with? Well, you know, I think it's... It, particularly for mental health, which I know yeah. we're, we're talking about here today, it's... it's so powerful. I mean, I think we all remember what it's like to, to, to feel that really redemptive feeling of being out and about, yeah. whether it's after a run or a long mm -hmm. hike. Um, there's something about being out, going on a journey on the outside, on, on, yeah. on a road trip, up a mountain, down a mountain. You feel like you're going somewhere, traveling into something. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's always good, you know. It's always to move is to, is to be healthy, I think. It's when yeah. you get stuck in a rut, you get depressed, yeah. You've got to break that. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, William, your book came out in January, yep. and you're actually going to be publishing in, in different countries now. Can you tell us about that? That's right. So, Run for Your Life comes out in the States in the fall. It comes yeah. out in Portugal in about two weeks. It's in about, I think, 10 different countries now. Wow. How yeah. does that feel for you to have that? Really good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I really believe in the message. You know, as I, I, I said earlier on, it kind of saved yeah. my bacon, too. It's how I became a, a therapist. So, yeah. I'm. I'm the first believer in it, so yeah. I'm, I'm really happy to be brilliant. working with what I believe in. That's brilliant. William, thank you so much and all the best with your book. Thank and I'm you, sure we'll be Chrissy. hearing more from you. It's thank lovely you. speaking to you. You too. Okay. All right, guys. Well, if that wasn't enough to get your mind running, we have an exclusive interview with Bruce Baclary, the director of RX Run, a documentary which follows three young people who are prescribed to a running group to help improve their mental health issues. Let's take a look. I left school because I knew that if I stayed at school, people would probably find me on the bathroom floor. Well, Art Run is a documentary uh, about the positive relationship between mental health and running. Um, it's the story about a group of uh, teenagers that have been diagnosed with severe depression and anxiety. And um, after conventional um, medication treatment, they've been diagnosed with a unique, uh, with, with a unique uh, prescription to run, uh, to, to join a long, long distance run group. Running is really accessible. Basically anybody could, could do it. All you need is a pair of shoes, a pair of running shoes. And um, so, you know, it, it, it's easier to, to, to adapt. Um, and also because running releases endorphins after you, you do it for a while. And these, this chemical reaction um, makes you feel better. It brings you to a positive state of euphoria, basically. If you're going through an anxiety attack uh, or, a, you know, a heavily, uh, or, a, or a heavy depression episode, it will really make you feel better. So um, that's why it's so wonderful. But uh, yes, exercise is great, and running in particular, is, it's very, very good for you. Um, but also sharing your story with others, sharing the fact that you're going through, uh, through, um, through anything, like if you're going through uh, a very tough moment in your life and that's causing your depression or your anxiety, that in itself makes it more manageable. Um, I notice that people are able to uh, to overcome this much easier when they when they know that they're not alone, that when they when their when their stigma is diminished, because there is a stigma related to mental health uh, illnesses. So the more we talk about it, the more we, we, we get rid of it. I think that depends.
depends upon um, the, uh, the, 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 the condition. I think that um, if for some folks, you know, they could actually, they don't need anything. They can just run and they, they, they are the physical, the, 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 the physical changes of running like allows them to, to manage their mental health. Uh, some other folks, unfortunately, they do need also the um, some medicine, uh, some medication to uh, to be able to to manage that um, and their mental health condition. However, over time, uh, they are I've seen that uh, the intake is a, is a bit smaller and they don't always need it. So only when they're you know really really uh, feeling down. The, the, all the stories we captured were, were were very interesting. I think that there isn't one that has more merit than another. I think that uh, we all are going through a journey and um, the stories that we captured in the documentary, in this film, are meant to be shared with everybody. So whenever anyone feels uh, whenever anybody watches this, hopefully they'll be able to to understand this and put their, the, the, themselves in in the shoes of the characters and see how they would behave, how they they would uh, um, approach uh, managing their their life if something like this happened to them. When I'm running, I'm thinking about where I'm going to, what my next turn is. But when I look at my progress and I see that I'm going to school more than no times a week, it's really impressive to me because I honestly can't even sit in class for 10 minutes at a time without almost going insane. Thanks very much for that video. Well, after the break, I'll be speaking to nutritionist Hannah Richards, who'll be giving us her food top tips for those new to exercise and answering this viewer question. What are some of the best foods to eat if you are obese? Well, Hannah will be answering that after the break. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit ChrissyBShow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. back to the Chrissy B Show everyone where today has been all about exercising for our mental health. So, so far we've heard from our resident psychologist Dr. Audrey Tang as well as from psychotherapist William Pullen and filmmaker Bruce Baclarian, all of whom are saying the same thing, get out and exercise. But say you've done that and you're struggling to understand the right types of foods to be eating. Well gather round because here we have fitness expert and nutritionist Hannah Richards to give us her top tips. Hello Hannah. Hi Chrissy. How are you my lovely? I'm very well thanks. Looking nice and bright and Thank springy. Thank you. <laughs> so obviously we definitely need to be eating the right foods if we are exercising as well. So what are your top tips would you say? Um, I think, yeah, you just sort of need to add something a bit extra, and especially if you're new to exercise, yeah. always have something, fuel your body, so have something maybe a little bit before or something afterwards, or time your exercise so that lunch is afterwards or okay. dinner is afterwards or something like that. Right. And always have a fully stocked fridge, so... Of okay. good food. Of good food. Yeah. To get rid of the junk, would you say? Yeah, definitely get... Sort of do a spring clean in those cupboards, those naughty cupboards, and then okay. replace them with lots of good fruit, vegetables, nuts, seeds, good protein and things like that. Okay, what, what about some of the other things that we should keep, like store cupboard essentials, would you say? Because obviously the fruit and stuff... Yeah, in the fridge. Stuff that you can actually keep in your, in your cupboards. I would always have some of those great tins of sardines and <laughs> mackerel and really high omega fish because sometimes okay. you're caught short and you need a good breakfast or a lunch yeah. or a dinner yeah. and you can always put them on some rye bread or something like that um, a good jar of peanut butters a good staple okay um, a good bag of nuts almonds um, and maybe some good olive oil and coconut oil okay. um, things like that so yeah a few little essentials okay brilliant so what are you gonna be making for us today and why Hannah so we're gonna make some protein balls because they're quick and easy really inexpensive okay. and you can sort of design them yourself so there's a few ingredients here that we're gonna mix and match um, and it's a high protein good fat um, 
little snack for after you've yeah. exercised. It's good actually you mentioned that because the ones you buy in the shop are like that oh. tiny and they're what, two quid? Yeah, they're really for expensive. Of, of food. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm often put own. off from buying them because I think that's not going to fill me up. So. No, no. <laughs> And I don't want to pay two quid for like a mouthful yeah. of something, yeah. Okay. So these are really cheap and easy and quick, and as I said, you can use any yeah. ingredients you like. Okay, so what have you got? So, um, you are you got? ready to get your hands mucky? Yes, all right, so let's do that. <laughs> I'll take my ring off. Yeah, I'll better take, take that ring off. off okay, so we've got, a, we've got some oats here, so any type of oats full of good B vitamins. Um, and the, really the aim is, is to make sure that when you've got your your ball is is sort of malleable, so okay. it's got to be a good consistency. Right. So you've got to keep adding. So you're in. not measuring, basically. Yeah, the there's no measuring going on. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so we've got some oats. We'll start there. This is some. If you like chocolate, good um, raw cacao, um, just for a good antioxidant. And everyone likes a little yeah, bit of chocolate. Definitely. Um, then we're going to add some blueberries, and this is when we're going to get some. We're going to get a little bit. This is so dangerous. And, okay. <laughs> and um, we're going to add some peanut butter because that's kind of your glue. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see. So there we go. We'll give it a. I'll give it a bit of a whiz round. Um, so tell me, what is your what is your exercise um, regime? At the moment, I well, I'll be sort of telling the viewers in my tips later on. Oh. But it's okay, I can say a little bit of it now because I, I was I was going to say that I was going to the gym at lunch times. Yeah. But because um, I moved, I don't have a gym close to me, so I've started exercising at home. Oh no. Nice. And I've got a chin up bar now and some weights and some DVDs. Yeah, don't don't look surprised. I've only managed one. A little bit of honey. Do you one. like honey? Yes, yes, I do. I love honey. Nice Especially and Cypress sweet honey. Oh. I love Cypress honey. So it's got, you know, the aim is as well of, of having something, you know, food's got to taste good, you know, if it's, yeah. sometimes people are put off by healthy snacks, aren't they? Because they're just too healthy or they're sort of deemed as, as sort of rabbit food. Yes. So I'm going to get the hands in and mush those blueberries up. It's always good to add a blueberry or a blackberry or a raspberry because they'll give you a little bit of water and um, they'll help sort of stick everything together as well. Okay, so um, it's always good to sort of put some blueberries, some blackberries, some raspberries, give it a bit of goo. So you can start seeing that's getting a bit yes, gooey, but yeah. it's a bit too gooey. Sure camera. Bit so too yeah. what I want you to do, Chrissy, if you can take that white jar. Behind you. Go. Yeah, there we go. And this is just sort of a seed mixture. So okay. if you can sort of add that in for me, and then we can start. How much? Yep, perfect. All right. Yep, all in. One more. One more. Yeah, and then half a scoop of oats again. Of oats, oats are really, you know, obviously you can turn these into your porridge and put them in anything. So there we go. And then we're just gonna mix it up and just take literally a little bit and start making it into a ball. It looks a bit messy, I know. <laughs> you love Not mess, very attractive, <laughs> but once you've, once you've got the good. right consistency, yeah. then you can just start rolling them up like that and putting them on the plate. That looks really nice. Yeah. And then you can take some desiccated coconut that we've got in that jar there, or a uh -huh. little seed mix or anything, and, and then all you do is roll them in the, in the mixture. Then you just put them in the fridge for, you know, overnight. Okay. And the aim is just to have one after exercise, yeah, not so the whole the problem, plate. Yeah, so that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So there's some like that. I'm just going to wipe my hands. And then the, so um, the bowl there, we can just, if you just take the desiccated coconut, Chrissy. Yep. And then just sprinkle them on the plate. Oh, over the, yep, yep, over them like over that. Them, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Doesn't that look pretty? Quick and easy, protein balls for before exercise or after exercise. Lovely. Okay. What's better, before or after? One, one of each, like one before, yeah, one after? Yeah, well, <laughs> it depends how good they taste. You could end up eating them just all the time. But I would True. say after exercise, okay. yeah. And they're good to have in your gym bag or your snack bag yeah. or your, your yeah. fridge. Just sort of easily, easily accessible. Okay. And they don't cost you three pounds a pop. Yes. So you'll be saving yes. on the bank balance it's, it's as well. true. Sandra, we've got time for a couple of yes. viewer questions. This person is asking, what are some good <clears throat> post-workout foods for swelling muscles and joints? Ooh. Well, my favourite is magnesium. And okay. so I think the best thing to do, so you can get um, bath salts, mm -hmm. magnesium bath salts, and they help you relax, decrease stress. You can also get magnesium in a spray, so you can spray it on your muscles. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. 
But yeah. yeah, a nice bath with a whole bag of magnesium bath salts will help decrease swelling, inflammation okay. and reduce stress as well. Cool. And this person is asking, what are healing foods for people with obesity? Um, I would say that, you know, if you are looking to sort of lose weight, then you're, you know, most of the time people just don't eat enough green vegetables, really? all vegetables and fruit. It used to be five portions a day and yes. now it's gone up to 10. And that's yeah. just sort of because no one's eat, people aren't eating enough good fiber, good antioxidants with the fruit. But if fruits. they're not even eating five, what's going to make them do 10 now? <laughs> well, maybe it'll force them to eat three, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, fruit and vegetables because they help keep our systems clear. They yeah. keep help us eliminate um, they keep our digestive system moving so yeah. fruit and veg you know you just can't go wrong eating it every single meal you know eating fruit and veg eating fruit especially is a lot better than the bag of Haribo's the <laughs> chocolate at break time the yeah. digestive yeah. biscuits so you know if suddenly you're eating three punnets of blueberries then mm. yes it's sugar it's fructose but it's a lot better than all the other then, stuff as well yeah at least it's yeah. got the vitamins as yeah well. exactly and finally uh is the paleo diet actually good for you this person's asking yeah the paleo diet or the did i say it wrong no okay all right go ahead <laughs> i think yeah paleo diet paleolithic diet caveman diet stone age man yeah. diet what is it first of all it's basically everything that you would have got in the caveman time so from the from the land from the sea that's very natural mm -hmm. so meats with no antibiotics everything grass-fed organic high fat high protein low carbohydrates okay so you're basically getting your carbohydrates from your vegetables and fruits and mainly vegetables no mm. wheat products so they so on this table here we'd be able to eat um, the blueberries, not the peanut butter. Oh. It's really very limited. Yeah, yeah. Um, and with all these diets, people have different variations of them because they're so strict and they just don't fit into our modern day lives. Okay. So they might be strict two, three, four times a week and then have cheat days. But it's okay. basically a diet which is high fat, high protein, and low carbohydrate. Is it mm. good for you? Yes, if you get the principles right. If you don't, you end up eating a very high protein, high fat diet, a bit like Atkins. Okay. And yeah. that doesn't work for everyone. So okay. it's good to establish the ground rules and make sure you get those vegetables in. Okay. And just back, we've got a couple of minutes, Hannah. Just yeah. back to um, people that are just starting out exercising now. Could you give us like maybe a typical day's meals, that stuff that they can maybe have that will be good to give them that energy to? Yeah, sure. Dinner. Well, there's that great recipe we did a while ago, mackerel yes. on rye toast, which yeah. is really good. And um, one of my favourite rules, as you probably know, is something green with every meal. So yes. whether that's a little bit of rocket, some green leaves, broccoli, so mm -hmm. something like that for breakfast, or a bowl of oats with some blueberries, because they're really good for giving you energy and sustain yeah. you up to lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Lunchtime, I'd always have a good lean protein, like maybe some chicken, avocado, spinach leaves, something like that. Okay. Maybe a protein ball or yeah. a rice cake with some peanut butter on for a snack and then dinner you know whether you're having if you've had chicken at lunch maybe fish at dinner mm -hmm. three different vegetables maybe some rice or sweet potato to keep the energy going especially okay. if you are new to exercise because yeah. you're burning more than you normally do so you might find yourself a bit hungrier and for those of us who like to have a bit of a dessert after dinner mm -hmm. something healthy um, I really, <laughs> no, I really like, it's a bit, it's a bit strange, but actually it really works. So you sort of, do you like coconut oil? Yes, I do. So you put coconut oil in a pan and you chop down a banana yeah. and give it a light fry, add blueberries, smash them up a little bit. So it's, it's a bit gooey. Yeah. And then a, a teaspoon of honey. And it's a really yummy um, treat in the evening. Oh, that sounds if, lovely. If your taste buds are really used to refined sugar, then yeah. it's probably not going to rock your boat. <laughs> but um, you could put some chocolate on top. But oh, it, a bit of cinnamon it, as well. A bit of cinnamon, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Oh, love that sounds... I'm, I might try that tonight. But dark chocolate, peanut butter, banana, they're great combinations. Yeah, yeah. Or um, one of my favourites to make is... Um, stuff a date with an almond and then dunk it in some dark chocolate. Oh, that sounds lovely. <laughs> Just don't eat the whole pack. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, thank you so much. Pleasure. And we should try these during the break. Absolutely. Brilliant. Right, guys, so after the break, I'll be speaking to our good cause of the week, Let's Share, who are a community aiming to get more women into extreme sports. And I'll be telling you how I personally find motivation to exercise. But first, a question. 
where would you wakeboard? Would that be A, on water, B, on land, or C, up in the air? We'll find out after the break. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, everyone, the TV program that looks after your mental health and well being. Now, as you know, today has been all about exercising for your mental health. So, we've covered running today, but what if you've done that and you're up for a fresh challenge? Well, then that's where our good cause of the week, Let's Share, comes in. And I'm delighted to be joined by its founder, Georgia Reschigno. Hello, Georgia. Hello, Chrissy. Lovely to have you on the program. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Now, before the break, we did ask a question which you will be answering for our viewers. We asked you, where would you wakeboard? A, on water, B, on land, or C, up in the air? Can you tell our viewers? On water. Okay, what actually is wakeboarding then? So it's a bit like uh, skateboarding or snowboarding, but yeah. it's obviously on water and okay. it's on a little board, which is a bit shorter than any other boards. And okay. it's a bit like water skiing. Yeah. So you're towed by a boat, uh, okay. but it's on a, on a board. And okay. it's great fun. Have you, have you obviously done that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's great fun. So tell us about Let's Share. How did you start it and why did you start it in the first place? So I started Let's Share when I came out of uni. Um, I graduated from sports management. I was trying to set up a business and I trialed different ideas. And, yeah. and then I just thought, why don't I just try organising an event to engage more women into doing different sports? Okay. Um, I'm extremely passionate about snowboarding myself. Yeah. So I started with a women's snowboarding session which okay. had great success. Um, loads of women were interested. We had people on waiting lists. Um, but how did you get the people so interested though? Because snowboard is quite like a, wow, this is really extreme. Like, yeah. it sounds a bit scary. It was all on social media. I just kind of put okay. it out there, you know, to see if any women were interested. And I think the actual um, idea of having a women's snowboarding session only, that yeah. kind of attracted a lot of women, you Why know. Why do you think that, that is? Um, I think it's because women may be like the idea of, because they were all beginners, yeah. um, not being surrounded maybe by other men, which <laughs> look at you, you know, maybe have a laugh, as, you yeah, know, yeah. just makes you feel a bit more confident. Yeah, and Okay, so, so it was a good response. So yes. lots of people turned up. And how was yeah. that first session? It was great. Loads of fun. We had 24 women on snowboards, which were terrified to start off with. Okay. Um, they probably thought, my goodness, what am I doing here? <laughs> um, but it was great. I mean, after two hours of snowboarding, their confidence, you know, they were all very good. Yeah. Um, and I think they all walked away very confident, knowing that they were able to do that, okay. you know, and I think that was great. Um, yeah. So that's when I've now decided to run other events as well for okay. different sports. So what other other sports do you actually do? So you do concentrate more on the extreme type of yeah, sports? Yeah, a bit alternative. Any... Oh, um, alternative. So, you know, rather than just gym classes, so let's snowboard in, indoor climbing. Okay. Uh, I've got surf and yoga weekends planned. Now the summer's coming. Surf and yoga? Surf and yoga. Oh, surf and yoga. Surf. I was going to yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> you can do um, stand-up paddleboard yoga. That's another idea. Yeah. So it's yoga on a long surfboard. Okay. Um, but yeah, now the summer's coming as well, looking at outdoor activities, wakeboarding, yeah. um, stand-up paddleboarding, kayaking, okay. um, just anything a bit different, you know, that allows yeah. people to try something new, challenge themselves and just have some fun, really. Okay. And how, how does it actually work? How do people join and get involved in the first place? Do you have everything up on your Facebook page? How, how does it all work? Yeah, so... Um, we post a lot all on the Facebook page, um, mm -hmm. uh, but we are big on social media, so like just Instagram, Twitter, but yeah. Facebook, there's also a closed group uh, okay. where I try and post, you know, different activities, even just different runs which are going on, just to get more women involved in anything going on, really. Okay, and can anyone um, join any age? Yeah, yeah, any okay. age. Um, any age, absolutely any age, any <laughs> ability, beginners, you know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Facebook is very big, so there's, a, you know, like the Facebook page and following all the events are put out on there. Okay. And I also have a website where I also write a blog myself, but I try and get guest blogs as well to just inspire and motivate, you know, women okay. to try different things. What kind of an impact is, has this been having on, on women in general, would you say? I mean, it's great. I've had women which have never tried these sports before, you know, come into mm. these events, wanting to try more. I think... Once you have that confidence of having tried, say, snowboarding, yeah. Yeah. it gives you confidence to then try different activities, you know, and follow that in your everyday life, okay. which I think is great. Which is really um, good. And increased self-esteem as well, I think. Okay. And, and would you say uh, this has, or has impacted your mental health really well? Because you're doing something, obviously, that, that helps others. Yes, how, how has it affected you definitely. personally and how do you cope with everything? Like, obviously, it must be very busy as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, it helps a lot to see, I mean... 
such the positive effects it has on you know the people that participate in the sports yeah. for me it makes me feel good as well to see that I am helping all these people come in along as well okay. um, so that's great you know Brilliant. it gives me yeah a lot of positive okay. vibes <laughs> and what's your favorite sport out of everything my favorite sport I have to say is snowboarding okay. I'm a former former snowboard cross athlete um, wow. I started at the age of eight um, and competed went on competing for GB yeah, oh, uh, but really? I stopped a few years ago. So okay. yeah, I'm trying to get more women doing that sport now. Okay. And uh, for someone just starting out, what would you, what sport would you recommend? Maybe for complete beginners, they're not really used to even exercising, and they want to do something, try something new, something a bit exciting, but not like your average. <sighs> yeah, just stuff that, yeah. that's out there. I honestly think any. That's why what the good thing is about with let's share. Mm -hmm. Um, most women which come are beginners in all of the sports that we do. Okay. So it's just a way of just engaging, going for it, maybe finding, you know, groups around the place which do those sports. You don't feel a bit so intimidated, yeah. you know, yeah. maybe when you are joining uh, or go bring a friend and, you know, go along yeah. with someone. Uh, but I think any, any really yeah. different sports you can try. Okay. Maybe the wakeboard and other weather's getting a bit Yes. Better. Yeah. Get outside, enjoy the sunshine. Yes, it's true. <laughs> get your vitamin D. Yeah. Get good for your mental exactly. health as well. Exactly. Yeah. It yeah. makes you feel good. Definitely. Okay. Georgia, all the best with, with Let's Share and for the Thank future. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on to talk about Thank it with you. us. Thank it's you. Thank you. All right, guys. So don't go away because now I'm going to be telling you all about how I find the motivation to exercise. <laughs> All right, guys, so here are my tips. Now, the first way that I motivate myself to exercise is actually finding something that works. So find something that works for you. Now, before I moved six months ago, I had a gym right across the road and it was ideal for me to do a class during my lunch break and the studio was just down the road. So actually I would do most of the classes on the days I would be recording here. So it, it really worked for me at the time. But when I moved, there was no gym close to me. So I had to think of something else that works. So for example, now I have weights at home and I have DVDs and a hula hoop and I mix things up. And now I also have a chin up bar. Um, I've been trying to do a chin up for the last two weeks and I managed my first one the other day so I'm really proud of myself and I'm going to keep going with that one. Me and my hubby set ourselves a little challenge that every time we walk past the chin up bar we have to try and do one. Uh, so you know you can just set yourself little challenges and just find something that works for you. The second point is to schedule it in. So once I found something that works for me I created a new schedule for myself. So obviously I could no longer go to a gym since there's not one close to me and there's no way for me to exercise on the days that I record the show because I need to you know to travel to to the studio and to have meetings and so on. So I created a completely different schedule and I also started walking more with my husband. Now another way that I uh, find motivation to exercise is by not listening to feelings. So do not listen to feelings. I don't always feel like exercise, but I remember how I feel after I've exercised. And you know, we always feel really good and like satisfied and we, you know, we cheer ourselves on once we've done something that was difficult. So sometimes I feel so drained, but I just go and I try just maybe putting my trainers on and that alone seems to motivate me to do something. So try and get into that, that mind frame and remember how you will feel afterwards. And if it helps, you can put on some music and you know, get, you know, get that beat going and put your trainers on as well. And you kind of find that it kind of motivates you as well. Now, something else that I always remember is that something is better than nothing. Now, I do tell myself this. So even when I'm really busy, I try to do at least a little something. So today, for example, though I had you know, I had the show to come and do, I had meetings. I just fit in like 10 minutes of hula hooping. And it's not a lot, but also it's, it's better than doing nothing at all. So that was something that, it was 10 minutes, apparently I burnt 70 calories, it got my, you know, my heart rate up, strengthened my core muscles. So there's always a little something that you can do. Don't think, well, I haven't got time to do a full session today and, you know, I don't have half an hour, an hour to dedicate to exercise. Even if you do five minutes, and there was once, um, one of our trainers here once said that you can do the 20, 20, 20. It takes five minutes. So what's 20, 20, 20? So you do 20 um, press-ups, 20 sit-ups, I think it was, and 20 squats. And if, if that's all you can manage, if that's all you have time for, just do that. If, you, if you've got time to do it, three times over so you do 20 times uh, each exercise three times you can do that as well but remember it's not a waste it, something is better than nothing so make sure you try and you know look at doing that as well and that will give you a bit of motivation and finally enjoy the benefits so you should be able to maybe look at yourself in the mirror and be happy with what you see I know that I am and I know when I don't exercise 
um, you know, things don't look as good as they could. So I have to make sure that I keep that going. So do look at yourself in the mirror sometimes after you've done a bit of exercise. Start seeing the difference that it's making to you, not just also physically, but also mentally. And make sure that you enjoy those benefits. Well, everyone, we have reached the end of today's programme. But if you would like to let us know how you keep fit and what exercise works for you, please do email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Until next time, bye-bye for now.